Uh, and that way I can protect the project and make sure it, uh, it comes out the way that it needs to come out. Um, in, in helping me do this, I've enlisted the aid of a number of people uh, who are helping to find the funds that we're looking forward to. Uh, one of the people is uh, a young woman out of New York named Pat, Patty Beninati, who has been very helpful and very aggressive in trying to help us uh, put the funding together. Um, so uh, what I'm looking for is basically somebody that will write us a check for $49.5 million so that we can make the movie that, um, that we're ready to, to make. The screenplay is, is ready, uh, the budget is done, and uh, all the visual effects have been prepared and, and planned by the teams that I have worked with over the years mm. at DreamQuest and Rhythm and & Hughes, and uh, I have a very strong visual effects team. But the heart and soul of the movie will be what I had always wanted to see but have never been able to put on the screen. Back when I did the original miniseries in 83, it got phenomenal ratings. It was the number one show in the country. It had a 40 share, 80 million viewers tuned in in North America and stayed. Nobody went away. Uh, when it was released the following year in 84 around the world, um, okay, we were up against the 1984 Olympics. Well, we beat the Olympics two to one in the ratings around the world. I remember, so yes. It's a hum humongous audience out there because V is such an impotent brand name and it really connects. And the, the critics, my God, were fabulous to us. They, they gave me just some, so many rave reviews for, the, for myself, for the project, for the actors, for everybody. And everybody loved V back in 1983. Everybody except me. Because I was disappointed that I couldn't get on the screen what I had in my head, what I wanted to see. We were working at the state of the art, obviously, with visual effects. I was using the same people that uh, Steven Spielberg used and that George Lucas used. Uh, in makeup, it was the same thing. We were absolutely at the cutting edge of the state of the art, but it was still rubber masks with air hoses going into it. And well, nowadays, we can do, you know, you can do Voldemort, you can do Pirates of the Caribbean. Uh, and beyond that, the, 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 the abilities to enhance uh, cinematically the visuals with uh, CGI and stuff didn't exist in those days. So I was really hamstrung and you know people look at the at the V from 1983 now and they say well it's really it's really pretty good it still works pretty well but some of those visual effects are just not very good. I knew they weren't very good in 1983. <laughs> you know I hated what I saw. Well, well some of the makeup uh, skills the CGI would certainly go a long way uh, with the, the reptilian skin type thing, but I must admit, and, or at least compliment you, sir, the visual effects, um, the, the ships, um, the firing on the streets in L.A., mm -hmm. um, the weapons, uh, I thought were all very well done, and the cinematography for a television program was outstanding. Um, well, I was lucky to have John McPherson as my DP, as director of photography on the piece. John had done the Hulk with me for years in a lot of TV movies and was a very, very gifted uh, cinematographer. And that's part of the reason the movie has a theatrical kind of quality to it. But um, in those days, if you wanted to have a shot of a spacecraft flying through, you couldn't pan with it because that way they had to track it uh, through the, the background. And it was frightfully expensive and really almost impossible to do. Um, plus, the, the skills uh, had just hadn't increased to the point that they have today. There, were, there are a couple of effects shots in V, the original in 83, that cost $75,000 for, like, for like 20 seconds 20 of seconds, film. Sure. You could do the same shot on your laptop today for 25 bucks, and it would look better than what we did back then. And it was so, it was so frustrating. I, I had the same frustrations that James Cameron had when he came up with the idea of a, of a liquid Terminator man, but the technology wasn't there yet. And it wasn't until Jim did Abyss and created that wonderful silky creature in Abyss that he finally was able to say, okay, now we have the technology that I need to, in order to make the Terminator the way that I want it to look. And, and that's the same thing that's happened now. The, uh, the world of visual effects has just grown by leaps and bounds, so I can now make it look the way that I always wanted it to look back in 83. The performances of the actors that I got back in 83, it'll be hard to beat those performances because if you look at the film as I did the first time when I saw it in a rough cut with just my editors, before there were any visual effects or spaceships or lasers or explosions or any of that stuff, it was just the actors working 
and it was gangbusters because the story was so tight and so strong and so human and it was and all the rest I knew was just going to be icing on the cake and uh, and frosting uh, because the story the heart and the soul of the piece about the characters and the actors was was so fully realized and that's exactly what I want to do with V the movie which is to mine the human contact. It's, it's, it's not just a motion picture, it's an emotion picture, if you will, um, because it's really, it's really strongly about people. A lot of the studios didn't understand that either. They always saw V as, a, as a, an invasion picture, and V is not, it never was. V is a picture about occupation. V is a picture about suspense, about tension, about whether you can look over your shoulder and, and whether you can trust the woman that you're sleeping with or the child that you gave birth to. Uh, those are the, the emotional moments that I was eager to explore back then and still am in the, in the new movie, V. So, so we're very excited about the prospects and uh, with the help of people like Patty Beninati and, and a number of other finders who are out there beating the bushes to get the money together for us so that I can make the movie the way that I want to and the way that I know that the public wants to see it. One of the interesting things that, that happened is when I put together the DVD release for Warner Brothers of, the, of my original miniseries back in the early 2000s, Warner thought it was going to be a little cult item that would sell maybe 15,000 units total. Surprise. And uh, Well, actually it did sell 15,000 units the first day yes. on Amazon alone, <laughs> and it went on to sell like two and a half million units uh, for bringing in like fifty million dollars to Warner Home Video, um, and that was without any promotion, when the advertising, no publicity or anything. And in the uh, on the uh, the commentary track that I did, the director commentary, I gave an email address where people could write if they had comments or questions. You know, well, beware what you wish for. This this is. This as, is one book. As we see him pick and, up the 20-pound book. Yeah, this is a, this is a four-inch ring binder. Uh, and these, this, I, have, I have three books like this, but they together, about this thick, only represent about 10% a fraction. of what I've gotten. If I had printed up every email that I've gotten, just about V, not about any of my other shows, it would go from here to the ceiling. And, uh, and there's a couple of interesting things about it. I mean, most, uh, probably half of them say something like, I was 10 or 12 or 15 years old when V first aired, and now I'm looking back at it as late 20s, early 30s, and I'm realizing, oh, there was a lot more going on than I knew when I was a kid. Uh, because the young people, of course, were drawn into the action, the adventure, the explosions and, and spaceships and stuff. But... The adult people who saw the picture realized that, oh, wait a minute, there was a lot more going on. There was a lot more substance and everything. And it's great because none of that has, has gone away, and that substance still maintains. And because we know that there is such an enormous fan base out there around the world um, who are, are so eager to, to see the original brought back with the original characters, not the original actors, of course, they're all too old now, but um, the idea being to, uh, to do a, uh, a remake that really takes all of the best essence of what I did in the original miniseries and moves it clearly into the 21st century uh, with Facebook and uh, inter Internet connections and all of that sort of thing and how we deal with that when suddenly it's taken away from us, which is one of the things the visitors do. Uh, that is just as intriguing now as it ever was. And we really feel very strongly that V as a movie um, wins on, on two counts because the people who remember the original, I can't tell you how many people have written to me and said, we're so tired of other people trying to do copies or reimaginings of your work. When can we see the original again? That, that's one of the emails that I get all the time from people. Um, I know that to be true. The other thing that's interesting about my work, not only on V, but on all of my work in the area of science fiction, is that sci-fi is usually thought of as boy stuff, as boys' territory. Um, not so with mine. My largest audience, always, for all of my shows, has been adult women. And in this, the emails that I get, for example, at least half of them come from women. 
which is extraordinarily unusual for anybody writing in this genre. And I think it's because I'm more interested in emotional and character relationships than I am in, in the trappings of science fiction. Uh, that's what draws people in and, and keeps them there and keeps them coming back and wanting to see V the movie in 3D, only in theaters and IMAX. Well, you know, it's very interesting that you talk about the um, female gender. Our own market research and the vast majority of our senior editors and writers are female. Mm -hmm. um, we find that about 70% of our, visit, our visitors at Wormhole Writers News Agency are female. Right. Um, one of the things that I believe made V what it is, the iconic epic, uh, is that you had a very broad ensemble cast. Now, now that's become very popular again these days in the 21st century, but back then there weren't a lot of producers and directors that were willing to bring the complex character interactions into it. Uh, I was a young man at that time involved in the entertainment industry on the periphery as a supplier. And it's one of the things I enjoyed both about the original V and uh, the final battle was is that you had a broad ensemble cast with all of the elements uh, interacting. And I believe that's one of the reasons that it was a fantastic success. Now that's just my opinion, uh, but I just wanted to compliment you um, because that work laid the foundation for where V the movie may take us in the 21st century. Well, thanks, Ken. I appreciate it. And, and, and you're exactly right in that um, what I wanted to do was to see how a broad spectrum of people would react to something. I did not want to make a Lone Star vehicle. Uh, v was extraordinarily unusual when it came on the air. I remember Brandon uh, Tartikoff, who was running NBC then, said to me that how many people had told him, there's too many characters in here. I get confused. I, I don't know who's who when I'm reading it. Brandon recognized, as I did, that yes, on the page there are a lot of characters. And sometimes it's, you have to go back and say, now wait a minute, who is this? But when you have the actor's face in front of you, and you, you know immediately who, who it is, and you recognize them, and it played, you know, like a million bucks. Audiences never had a moment of confusion as to who was who or who we were talking, who was talking about whom. And, uh, and I was eager to sort of have a spectrum of people that would represent society in a, in a small microcosm so that everybody in the audience, each person in the audience, male, female, young, old, would be able to say, oh, I think that's me. I think I'm her. I think, oh, I hope I wouldn't be like him, but gee, I might be. <laughs> you know, So that each person in the audience had an opportunity to really invest in one of those people. And, I mean, certainly the characters of, uh, of Mike Donovan, played by Mark Singer, and yes. Julie Parrish, played by Faye Grant, rose to the top uh, as as the iconic heroes and heroines that, that they were. Um, and they had a little more screen time than the others. But even so, they were blended in. And, uh, and in the new motion picture version, I intend to do exactly the same thing. Um, the, uh, the Mike Donovan role will certainly still be pivotal, as will the Julie role, but it's still an ensemble cast. And that's one of the strengths of V, and that's what... I think, agree with you, gave it its initial pull to, to so many, many people.